Hey everyone, Zach Finds Fish here. I'm just wrapping up an edit of a video where you guys are probably gonna see this before this video. However, I asked a question on YouTube. Would you guys like to see what's inside my backpack when I go out for fishing? And 88% of you guys said yes. I have 12% that said, yeah, why not? With a total of 34 boats. So with that being said, let's go check out and see what I have. I also did ask uh, if you had any questions for me about fishing, about Twitch, about YouTube, about creating content. And I'm gonna answer those questions here in this video. So first things first, I gotta get set up. I don't have a table. This is not large enough for my backpack. So let me get that. All right, everyone. So it's actually been a little while after those cutscenes of editing the video, which is probably why the lighting's a little bit different. Um, but again, I wanna show you guys what's in my backpack. Some of it's not in my backpack, but nonetheless. All right, so things that I have in my backpack. Tackle boxes, right? Everybody has tackle boxes. One of the questions that I'm actually gonna answer here right now is from Justin. He said, what backpack do you have? So the backpack that I have is literally my college backpack. It's literally just a Swiss gear backpack, no fancy fishing backpack, no tackle box slots, nothing like that. It's literally just laptop slot, uh, then the main backpack, and then some smaller compartments in front and on the side, I guess, but nothing special, just a regular Swiss gear backpack that I've had probably, probably 16 years. Whoa, <laughs> don't ask any questions. None of those questions. All right, but yeah, just a Swiss gear backpack. Um, and then another one was how do I organize my tackle? So first things first, I wanna show you guys what's in my bag, but also kind of how I organize my stuff. Since I'm a pond hopper and I'm a bank fisherman, granted I bring a backpack and a lot of stuff in it, um, I've been narrowing down my selection, trying to get into these smaller boxes. So right now it's been a lot of top water. So this box is a lot of top water, but a lot of mixed in. Um, for example, the Nessie here, the Berkeley Nessie. And then I have, you know, the mock shads here, but a lot of this is top water. I have my spooks, I have my popper and my chopo here, I have my frogs, and then jerk bait, crank bait, and the Nessie. And I, I kind of, the main lures that I use end up in this box. Uh, and then again, it kind of just rotates through. I have so many tackle boxes in this shell. You guys can't see it, but there's a cabinet right here. Um, so many in there that I kind of just, as I accumulate stuff, you guys can see some of the stuff up to like right here. I have so many things that I'm accumulating as I kind of go through the the process of not being able to fish because I have a newborn. And so I'm just kind of buying things. Again, a lot of Ollie's, a lot of clearance stuff from Walmart. So that's that one. And then I have another smaller tackle box with just weights and hooks. And honestly, I'll probably change this out as I go through my process of growing. Um, but I have a lot of my net heads here, my Tokyo rigs, EWGs in varying sizes. I have my, my twist lock. My twist lock hooks here, a bunch of worm hooks, my bullet weights, bobbers, things I don't really use, but stuff that I have found just kind of on the bank that I like to have, like this giant like catfish weight. I found that on the bank, uh, things like that. And that's kind of how I organize it. And then I have stuff like, for example, my spinner baits or, or my bladed jigs. So for example, I have my buzz baits in here. This is all my spinner bait stuff. So I have my, my these are called cross-eyed chatter baits. I have cro two cross-eyed chatter baits, a white and a red. I have this like American Hero, I think it was called, this chatter bait that I actually picked up from the Ultimate Fishing Show or Outdoor Rama, I can't remember. But it's kind of got like a swinging jig head on a chatter bait. It's really nice. Again, just a swimming uh, swimmer swimming jig. And I got the classic chatter bait. My swim baits, my Walmart ones, really. My buzz bait here, I think this is a Strike King or I think this might be a Strike King or a Booyah, I can't remember. Not really 100% sure. And then I have just, so again, bunch of, bunch of spinner baits. And again, I'm a bait fisherman, but also a pond hopper. And so this might be excessive, really. I may only throw like five lures. Even when I go to that small lake, I may only five, throw like five lures but I always like to have this stuff just in case, but I don't want to overwhelm my stuff where my backpack becomes too heavy. So moving through it, um, I used to, I'll show you guys here. I used to bring this with me, which is all my Senkos. And actually I'll probably put these in a bag and you bring these with me. These are like trick worms, finesse worms. I got some swimmers in here, which I need some new ones. They're all kind of burned out anyway, but I don't bring this anymore. I actually keep all of my plastics 
in this bag, which you guys might see in my videos. This is just a bag my wife bought something like a jacket or a shirt, and it came in this bag, and I liked it because it's Ziploc, and all of my stuff fits in here. So I keep, and, I, and this actually changes throughout the time that I'm going fishing. So I'll, I'll add and remove things. You know, here's Fanatics. I'm reusing his bag. I've burned through all those craws. Again, I'll, I'll link his uh, Instagram down below. And Guggen Squad craws, things like that. This changes the most out of everything. If I know I'm, I'm gonna need craws, I'm gonna bring craws. If I really wanna try like worms and things like that, then I will probably swap in some worms and things like that. But this is, this bag changes the most and this is what I always bring. This is, I've really got into and really, for me, I always bring confidence baits. And that's actually gonna lead me into one of my questions here from Lazy Baits. If you're fishing a new body of water, do you research before? I don't. I When, when I'm going to a new body of water I've never fished before, I always throw just confidence baits. Confidence baits, whether it's soft plastics, a spinner bait, something that I know I catch fish on on a regular basis and I don't have to research. So no, I don't, I, I never research. Maybe I should, but I just don't. Now here's the stuff that I bring kind of just in case and I've actually added a new tool to my arsenal. Some forceps. Um, I've been using pliers and the pliers that I've been using are not good at all. So I got some forceps at, at Walmart for like $4 and they'll be really helpful for me getting hooks out that are deep inside the fish's mouth. So I added this. Those are new to the backpack. I always have my scissors connected to a string so if I'm cutting knots I can have it just outside my backpack. I don't have to dig through my backpack to try to find my scissors to cut braid or whatnot. These are again, just $3 scissors, braid scissors from Walmart. Get the job done, cut braid, cut everything. And if I start to dull them, it's not a big deal. I have that connected to a, a, a little Barracuda, like not helper or like a line cutter, just cause it has this. Moving through my backpack, really the most important, my scales. And as you guys know, I've been using two scales. And the reason why is because I've noticed who, I, who was I watching? I think it was Larry. He's been having issues with this one too. And I don't know if it's battery or whatnot, but I think most of the time I'm having to weigh two or three times just to try to get an accurate reading. And this one is kind of just my backup. I like to use this one. It's just a little bit easier to clip together, but this is my backup. If I'm having frustration trying to weigh something, I use this one too. So then I can know if it's accurate, a towel definitely have a towel and I actually tied a towel on some some para cable here some just cord and have that for my hands when my hands get all slimy from the fish now I have another question uh, from both I have actually two questions from Justin and one from lazy baits for kind of going into what I'm going into next uh, favorite top water for frogs I am right now in love with frogs but also I think you know, it'd be easy answer to say a whopper plopper, but I actually think a spoop is probably my second favorite top water. And then the other question from Lazy Baits, how do conditions affect the lure you choose? To be brutally honest, I still throw just confidence baits. I may change colors. Like if the water's murkier, I may throw darker colors, things like that, but I don't really change too much. I throw spinner baits when it's raining. I throw worms when it's rainy, when it's sunny, things like that. I don't change too much when I probably should, but I know I do for certain change colors. But I, again, I don't change too much. And then moving into the next and probably final part of my backpack, I always bring my fishing line. You never know when you're gonna have a wind knot. You'll never know when you're going to have a bird's nest or a rat's nest. I always call it rat's nest because of gaming, because our cables underneath our desk look like rat's nest. Nonetheless, I always bring my braid, and but also my leader line. Always, always, always. You never know when you're gonna have a rat's nest or a bird's nest. You never know when you're gonna have a wind knot. I always bring it. And now I'm starting to buy extra because I burned through it. Now granted, I've gotten a lot better probably because of the more fishing I've done. So I haven't had to re-school in a while, but it's never bad to have a backup. I have 30 pound moss, uh, just the suffix pro mix braid. I'm telling you guys, my confidence line right now. And then this is the 20 pound. This is the high vis green or high vis neon, what do they call it? Neon line. So I always have these in my backpacks as well. I, again, I'm not gonna leave home without this because the last thing I wanna do is have a bird's nest, rat's nest, or a wind knot and not have this and have to tie on leaders and not bring this either. So that's always my backpack too on the side pockets. All right, so I got two final questions here. One from Brad Park. Uh, he asks, what is my favorite lure and presentation for fish? 
Honestly, since getting into it and really getting into it, my my favorite lure would probably still be a frog, topwater frog. I mean, how do you beat topwater frogging? But I think that plus like a a presentation of like a, a worm or a craw, I've really enjoyed craws. I think what I like about the underwater slow moving lure is that you never know when your line is going to be hit. And so you're bouncing and all of a sudden it's, it's being pulled and you have to hook set. With a topwater frog, what's better than seeing a fish come up and blow up on your frog? But those are probably my two, present, two favorite presentations slash lures. Probably a frog is my favorite lure hands down. Uh, and then the presentation would probably be like a Texas rig, uh, craw, or a worm, some sort of worm. And then Sabre Outdoors. Uh, again, I'm a little bit newer to fishing. I'm, I've always been creating content, but fishing is kind of my new realm of content. He asked, what out of, what out of production bait would you like to have back in production? To be honest, I don't know. I really don't know. I haven't been in the game long enough, uh, but I will say some of the lures that I have picked up from estate sales, uh, the one specifically would be, and I think that's a, there's a rumor that it may be coming back, which is the the King Shad from Strike King, which to me looks like a great lure. They just need to tweak some things. Again, it has it has plastic pins that hold the, the jointed piece together. Let me grab it for you guys. All right, so here's my tackle box full of lures that I got from an estate sale, multiple estate sales. You guys can see some of them. I have fish with some of them. I'll link that video down below, including this one, which is the Strike King King Shad here. But it's a jointed swim bait by Strike King. But the pins that are holding that are holding it together are plastic and they are known to break. So I wouldn't mind this coming back and having metal pins. So I'm not worried about breaking it when I hook set into a fish. But I, I mean, I guess I would say this one for sure, but I, I guess there are rumors that this is coming back. All right, guys, well, I think that wraps up the video. If there's anything that I didn't cover in this video, anything that I didn't show in my backpack, make sure you guys write a comment down below and I will answer those questions. Uh, again, guys, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you guys like and subscribe. I love doing these vlog style videos. So if you guys enjoy it too, make sure you guys do the things. Thank you guys for all the support. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. All right, before we wrap up the video though, if you guys wanna get your name up here, all you have to do is make sure you subscribe. Leave a comment down below in this video letting me know you have subscribed and you want your name up here and I'll get you guys up there. So let's read some names that are on the board already. We have a &E Custom Rods. We have Great Lakes Finesse. Awesome name to have up there. We have some new ones up here. Fishing with Peyton, uh, Harvey Gaming, and we have one last one, Luke B. Swimbaits. Guys, again, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you guys like and subscribe.